so these are the culprits that have been eating all my bird food from that dish. I swear, this pigeon right here, he's been sat there for the past five minutes on a mission to try and eat every scrap of food in that food bowl. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm happy he's there. And I'm happy that he's eating from my garden. But still, he's greedy. Does not want to share. Hi, I'm with Heather. And welcome to my very rainy garden. This is why I'm in my beautiful raincoat here. So today, I'm going to be planting some things out. I have been waiting ages to... Um, to plant some things out. We have had a succession of nights where it has been getting down to like one, two, three degrees Celsius, which is very close to freezing. So I've not actually been able to plant anything outside that is frost tender. But that is about to change. Unfortunately, it is absolutely peeing it down at the moment, but I'm British we are used to weather like this so i'm not about to let that stop me so let me show you what i've got to plant so in here i have got my potato seedlings which i have potted up a little bit these were the strongest four got my uh, not so strong for there. Um, to be fair to them, they have suffered a lot of aphid damage. Uh, that just right at the back there. Uh, those two are sunflowers in that little pot there. Over here is my leafless uh, tomato stem. So hopefully that is going to grow leaves once it is outside because it's steadfastly refusing to indoors. So I've got my trusty trowel and my not so trusty seedling or stem as the case may be. So I'm about to get that planted in here. Remember what I said about these tomatoes like to be planted deep. So you've got to dig a hole as deep as you can. Let's see if that is deep enough. Hmm, could be deeper. Do I have, oh, do I have any deeper to go? That may be the bottom of the planter there. Yeah, that's the bottom of the planter. All right, that's as deep as it's gonna get. It's just backfill a little bit with soil. So there we have it in situ, my little tomato stem. Check that out. My pretty little daisy is opening up. How cute is that? Right, so here is where I'm going to plant those sunflowers. So that's it, that's my sunflower seedlings in. So why don't we take a closer look at those? Okay, so we've got one just there. If you're asking about all these nutshells, if anyone is curious, these were an experiment to see what nutshells would be like as a kind of mulch. And uh, yeah, they are they're pretty good, they just do not want to biodegrade and yet they are completely natural. 
So in nutshells, it make it a great long lasting mooch. As long as you wash all the salt and oil and stuff off of them before you put them in your garden. So we're here, sunflower little one. And then just over here, sunflower seedling number two. I have been hardening these off um, for the past week or so, leaving them outside, just obviously not overnight with all the freezing nights we've been having. Do you see Garden Cat over there? He's like, what are you doing? Why are you out there in the rain and not inside with cats? So these will hopefully grow into nice big sunflowers. I've got absolutely no idea what variety they are. I just got those from the bird feed that I've been putting out for the birds. I was just out here, you know, pottering, checking over all my plants as you do. And I happened to notice that there was some sunflower seeds that had been knocked out onto the floor. And me being me, I was like, it's a sign. I'm supposed to plant these sunflower seeds. So I did. Not sure what they're going to look like, but hey, free sunflowers, right? And whilst we are here, I may as well show you some of the other things I've got going on. My strawberry plant has got flowers on, bless it. Yay! Strawberries. Uh, mint is making a very, very nice comeback here. It smells gorgeous as well. This is chocolate mint. For those who have been led to believe it tastes of chocolate, it does not. It tastes like a very strong kind of mint. I do not get the chocolate at all. Although it is chocolatey colours, as you can sort of see in the stem there. My salad is uh, growing very nicely as well. Got all kinds of things in here. This is my red vein sorrel. Um, I've got rocky, I've got mustard, I've got salad, spinach, all kinds of stuff. Can't even remember what I threw in there. Um, amaranth, I think, made it in as well. Got another one just down there because I love. I eat salad most days. I eat it at least six days a week, so it is a worthwhile investment for me to grow my own salad. My rebel radish is uh, doing <laughs> probably well down there. Look at it, it's not bothered at all, but it's invading the raspberry pot. Look at all those healthy looking leaves. That is going to be a beautiful radish when it's done. And then just over here, these are my straw flowers, which have come back over the winter. This one. You can just see it's got like a little flower bud on top there. So that should be flowering soon. We've got, uh, these are my artichokes. So you can see we've got all the sprouts coming up there. It's related, this is in the sunflower family, Jerusalem artichokes, Helianthus tuberosum. In here we've got well, that's a potato. I think that's an artichoke. I think that's an artichoke. This, most definitely potatoes. Gosh, look how healthy and beautiful that looks. Very, very pretty. And over here is my comfrey plants. The bees have been all over this thing. I've, I've had to tie it up because it, it's kind of taking over. But look, I mean, look how beautiful that is. And the bees love it as well, which means so do I. And check this out. Is this not the healthiest looking mint you have ever seen in your life? So beautiful. Over here, I've got my tricolor sage right next to it. I have to be careful with this because the mint will try and invade whatever it is next to. So I have to try and stop that. Uh, over here, these are my chives and look. They've got little flower buds on. So that's kind of cute. Got the last of my daffodils here. As you can see, they are all mostly going to seed now. My beautiful onion flowers just at the back there. I've got my lavender. This is, I've no idea what kind of lavender this is. I got it from Asda a couple years ago. 
This one right here, this tiny one, is a pink variety that I grew from seeds. It's two, two or three years old now. It grows very slowly, kind of like rosemary when you try and grow it from seed. Um, this dead looking one is the one I tried to grow from seed and this is the plant that I bought, which I know is kind of cheating because I feel like as a gardener who loves growing stuff from seeds, I kind of feel like I should grow everything myself. But sometimes you just want something quickly and it's just easier to go and buy a pot of rosemary from the store for like one, two pounds and just, just plant it there because it takes forever to grow. So shoot me already. So my onions are doing well. As you can see over here, got some poppies in with my dying daffodils. Then over, where's it gone? Over here, we have flower buds that will shortly be cornflowers. You can see it's got like quite a few on it there. Although this was the, the biggest one. One little addition to my garden, which you, which wasn't in the last video because I hadn't built it yet. Ta-da! Observe this. This is my tower thing for growing climbers and stuff up. And I'm really proud because I put this together myself. Usually I get the boyfriend to do it because sometimes tubes of metal, they don't really want to slide together as they are supposed to without some brute force behind it. But my boyfriend wasn't here when I decided that I wanted to put this together. So I did it all by myself. So I'm like so proud. I'm like girl power. Here it is in all its glory. Uh, this is supposed to be, it was supposed to be bean and pea netting that I put on, but I didn't have any of that, so all I had was this butterfly netting. So I put that on instead, so hopefully that'll be okay. This bee house at the back, I got this from m and and despite it being designed to go outside, because, I mean, who has bees in their house? It did not say in it it needed varnishing or any kind of preparation for it to go outside. And so now the roof is coming off it and it's all bowing in the wet. And if you just come around and see it from this angle, you can see that the floor is dropping off now. Which I'm kind of surprised because usually Marks and Spencers, they're, they're known for their quality. So to have something this poor quality from them I'm actually really surprised at. So my plan is to try and make it work to try and nail the roof back on as best I can and nail the floor on. Paint it in a preservative kind of wood paint and yeah just just hope for the best on that one really. But I'd be really sad if bees don't have somewhere to live in my garden because Marks and Spencers sold me a poor quality bee house. Bad. Bad Marks and Spencers. I'm surprised at you. Just one last thing to show you though before I wrap up this video. So I've been getting some seeds planted. And I have life. Those two at the front that you can see, these were those green uh, Kamato tomatoes. So both of those have popped up this week. And then the other one that has is a is that blue cherry tomato called Fahrenheit Blues that I got from Pennard Plants. So yeah, pretty happy about that and excited. I love it when I see new things pop up through the soil. 
but I also have one more thing that's just sprouted so let's go take a look at that. So this one is my first courgette that has popped up. You can see it's uh, looking pretty healthy, it's not unraveled its leaves yet though. This is a green round courgette. Uh, the variety is uh, Denise a fruit ronde, which is French, so apologies for the hideous accent. It basically translates to something like round fruits of Nice, which makes sense because it's around courgette and it was probably bred or discovered in Nice. So yeah, um, I've actually grown this before and I love this courgette. I know in the US you call these summer squash, but here in the UK we call them courgettes. So yeah, pretty excited about that. Got a whole tray of other ones um, as well that are planted, but they haven't sprouted. I will show you more of those when they do. So yeah, seeds. One other slight confession I have to make. Um, I planted some sunflowers outside a while back, or at least it feels like a while back, and I've not really seen any evidence of them growing. They might still grow because, as I've been saying, we've had lots of, of uh, nights when it's dropped below freezing. So I thought, hmm, why don't I plant them all indoors and then move them outside once they you know, once they've sprouted and stuff and I know they're alive and working. And because I have a lot of different, really beautiful looking sunflower seeds, I may have planted far more than I could ever plant outside. Observe this seed starting window greenhouse box. This is full of sunflower seeds and nothing but sunflower seeds some hybrid some open pollinated and if all of these grow I have nowhere to put all of them a lot of them I can fit in the garden well fit fit might be the wrong word a lot of these I could probably squeeze into the garden along with all the tomatoes and squashes and courgettes I'm trying to grow I'm ambitious. You can't say I'm not ambitious at least. But yeah, I've already got people lined up to take some off my hands. My mate at work has volunteered to take some spares for her garden. If, uh, you know, so at the very least, I'm going to be able to make somebody else happy by giving them beautiful sunflower seedlings and make me happy because I'll be getting a fair few of them as well. And I've just noticed, actually, I've got a couple of them sprouting. So I haven't labelled these, so I don't actually know which varieties they are. Um, most of them are red or bicolour varieties, because it was only the other year I found out that you could get red or bicolour sunflowers. And obviously that's just been something I've been passionate about ever since. So this one is sprouted right here just see that soil oh no hold on it's had a sprout i think there's a lot of wood chip in this soil so it's kind of hard to tell sometimes what sprouts and what isn't oh okay this that's definitely some kind of sprout so i've got two sprouts at the moment i got that one and i got that one now these two markers represent one side is hybrid and the other side is uh, open pollinated sunflowers. Problem is, I didn't really put a marker on to say which side was which, so I'm not going to know until I grow them. The problem with a lot of hybrid sunflowers is they don't actually make pollen, which is fantastic if you're wanting them as a cutting sunflower because you then you don't get pollen all over your house when you cut them and stick them in the bars. But for me, I want that pollen because I want to be able to breed the sunflowers and to get more seeds. So I need them with pollen. So my plan was to grow kind of a mix because they're, oh, they're 
really are some beautiful, beautiful hybrid varieties. And then just get like a blushy brush, swirl it around on the middle of one that I know to be open pollinated, and then swirl it around on the hybrid one to fertilize it. And maybe get some seeds from the hybrid one. I don't know. What, what I want to do is rather than having like a million different packets of sunflower seeds, I want to create like Heather's red sunflower mix and Heather's yellow sunflower mix and then just have a big bag where I will stick seeds of every, the appropriate colour into whatever bag and then just have a beautiful and unique mix just for me. And if I get anything particularly stunning, I can obviously start working with that and doing some breeding and selection and uh, yeah maybe have my own special sunflower variety which I will get to name because it will be my variety which would be pretty cool but this video is getting pretty long now so I should probably pop back outside and wrap this thing up and one more thing that I completely forgot about until right this second I picked up a passion flower plant yesterday. So I've got this to go outside. I don't have time to plant it right this second, but I will have to do that later on. Now, the good thing about passion flower, I'm pretty sure most of them have an edible fruit. So possibly I'll be able to eat what this produces. They also make these kind of flowers that are on the box, which are pretty stunning, you have to admit. And on the way to work, I walked past a house which has had this growing for more years than I care to remember in his garden. So my guess is that this will actually be hardy in my climate and will come back year after year, which means I better be careful where I plant it. But then I could potentially give cuttings to whoever may want them. So my next door neighbour should be pleased because we're always swapping cuttings and plants and stuff over the, the garden wall because we are both crazy garden ladies, that's what we do. So it really is getting very wet and I'm starting to worry about my camera not working anymore because of how much rain it's getting. So I'm going to call it a day. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed seeing my new seedlings that I've got planted. I hope the rain doesn't kill them. It shouldn't do, I think. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye.